What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm not doing your typical TCG deck profile and what I mean by that is we're playing our favorite deck and that is Hero. OG Elemental Hero all the way back in GOAT format which was extremely fun. I actually had like a small little local tournament with some of my friends. Nothing official from like you know a local store but just me and my friends got together and said hey let's do a GOAT format tournament and I decided to play Hero just for fun. That was lit because we ended up coming first place with hero believe it or not this deck is insanely powerful so if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one i don't really do time wizard stuff too often but this one i think was just way too fun and way too cool not to show off and we upload five days a week here on spanko so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned for all of that we're almost at 7,000 subscribers i couldn't do it without you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and with that Let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get into the profile, I do want to say that playing hero and being able to play a deck like this in GOAT format and actually be competitive with it is extremely fun. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. We are starting off with three Sparkman and three Clayman. Now Clayman, of course, I think is actually the best hero in GOAT format because 2000 defense is just an amazing card that you can just sit on for turn after turn and your opponent is really going to have a tough time outing it. If they do have an out to it, something like Thousand Iron restrict or you know if you have it set and then they go noble matter cross out it's perfectly fine because they have to use extra cards to get rid of it you can't just simply attack over it and it catches a lot of people off guard now i did come first place but i'm gonna be honest with you there's two cards in here that i actually didn't like at all and it's unfortunately the next two cards it's avion and burstinatrix so i actually decided to play one-on-one -on -one just because i really wanted to be able to summon flame wingman and essentially you know it came up once but i didn't even need to do it to win i just did it because you know i could and i wanted to summon the flame wingman but realistically these cards are actually not that good for you they don't actually get you anywhere they don't have effects obviously so these in themselves are only like bricks to make flame wingman it just doesn't help you go through your deck so in the future i would definitely swap these two out if you guys want to play a hero deck competitively however this is the first place profile so i want to be showing you guys exactly what i played avion and bristinatrix i think i would definitely take those out as for what i would put in i would probably just put in more traps maybe a second uh, return from the different dimension and a third judgment judgment was just mvp for me by the way so yeah maybe cut these two but uh this was the lineup that i was playing and i guess it was okay i mean it only ever came up once where i actually made flaming man but really i'd say just cut him right so here's the hero lineup and then we're playing three thunder dragon now you guys might be wondering why are you playing thunder dragon in a hero base deck well there is a card in the extra deck the twin headed thunder dragon that's very easy to make with thunder dragon of course especially with your fusion gate and it just provides a big body on the board for you on top of that it helps you dig through your deck a little bit deeper which is really really nice and then the typical one sinister serpent you can't not play this there's cards like graceful and stuff that you know sinister is just too good it also plays around the delinquent duo so this card's too important one sangan of course the really cool thing about sangan is it can search any monster with 1500 attack or less which means you can actually search your clayman you can technically search your avion and your burst tricks as well and i never actually searched those two but i searched clayman actually funny enough a lot right and then we're playing the one breaker of course out to back row the biggest problem this deck has is back row and luckily in goat format a lot of the standard goat decks don't actually play that many back row cards the most that you'll ever see really is like a ring of destruction you know a sakuretsu armor sakuretsu can be pretty scary but again like breaker outs that you're playing back row hate in the main deck so that you can get out that as well so that's why you're playing the one of this the one dd warrior later of course that can be searched with the sangan and these are just like goat staples essentially right one bls because funny enough your sparkman's a light your thunder dragon's a light but you also have darks like zambraya you have your breaker you have your sangan so you have enough darks where you want to be playing the one bls this i only actually summoned once the entire tournament and it honestly just baited out a mirror force i actually just attacked with it and they mirror forced me and i was fine i was like okay that's fine because then in my main phase two what i did was i just went fusion gate into thunder giant and i popped the monster and i can't remember what it was but i popped the monster and then i just sat on the thunder giant and then he was kind of like top decking and so yeah i ended up winning that way so this is that's the only time it ever came up but when it does come up i guess it can be really good then we're playing the one zombraya zombraya is actually really cool because it's a 2100 just normal summon so this pretty much outs a lot of things in the format but the really cool thing about zombraya is it actually gives you access to one of the most broken cards in the format if you can get it off it's just so insanely nuts and that is the last warrior from another planet if you put this card up and i put this card up once keep in mind zombraya is just a one-up right so i put this card up once and when i put this card up it was disgustingly powerful this card is so absolutely nuts especially if you back this up with any sort of back row hate so that you don't lose to any like you know mirror force sakuretsu etc etc ring of destruction this card is just absolutely insane and it just clears boards 
cards, right? So that's why we're playing the ones on Briya. And then of course, how do we make these kind of cards? With King of the Swamp. So I decided to play King of the Swamp. A lot of decks actually choose not to play it, but I just thought it made a lot of sense. The reason I chose to play King of the Swamp is one, it searches poly, which means that you can actually dig deeper into your deck, but two, it can act as any name. So if you have a Clayman, but you don't have a Sparkman, or you have a Sparkman without a Clayman, if you have Avion without Burst, you can always go into your extra deck with these cards, right? Then we're also playing the Dark Hex Sealed. You can play the Light one too. Uh, that one doesn't really matter. The reason I played Dark though is because we have a lot more Light Monsters than we do have Dark Monsters. And again, we wanted to make the BLS kind of easy to summon. So to kind of even out the Light to Dark ratio, I played the dark one instead. You can play light one, either one doesn't really matter. They're just extra cards that can be substituted for any fusion material. That's really it, right? So that's why I played the dark one. Then we're playing the, you know, the standard goat spell cards. There's nothing in the spell and trap area that's kind of too different from regular goat stuff outside of the fusion stuff. So we're playing the one graceful, the one pot of greed, the one duo, one snatch steel, one MST, one heavy storm, two Rota. Rota was at two in go format, which is insanely powerful because you can search any of your heroes, but it can also search DD Warrior Lady. Funny enough, it can also search Zombraya. So if you want to be making your last warrior, you can actually just get straight to Zombraya with this. So this card's of course really good. The really cool thing about this deck that I like over, I guess, your standard GOAT control decks is that you have a lot more ability to go through your deck in this deck. So what I mean by that is unlike your standard GOAT where you're just like top decking and hoping for the best, I guess, unless you're playing recruiters, right? Every other deck really just relies on their draw cards. Whereas this deck, you know, you can pitch the King of Swamp to search your poly. You can activate Rota to search a warrior. So you're kind of digging through your deck a little bit deeper outside of your just generic draw cards, right? So we're playing the two Rota, like I said. We're playing two Fusion Gate, one Terraforming, as well as one Polymerization. So let me explain this to you guys. The ratios might be a little bit weird, but they make a lot of sense, right? So the thing is, you're playing three Fusion cards. So two Fusion Gate, as well as the one Poly. Fusion Gate is really nice because it does get to stay on the field. And on top of that, you can use cards on your field or in your hand, which means you can use the Thunder Dragon after you add them to your hand and that's really cool because now you got a big monster on your side of the field however it does banish it right which could be a bad thing but we are playing the return from a different dimension which just helps you kind of play around that a little bit right and this card don't forget this because this is really important this card is not once per turn there was actually a game where i made thunder giant and twin headed thunder dragon in the same turn two big bodies use the thunder giant effect popped a card, and then just did some big, big damage. Now, you're not going to be really OTKing in this deck per se, but you can put up some big damage on the board, and on top of that, you're putting up big bodies. So unless your opponent has like a BLS, or if they're playing Chaos, they can have a Chaos Sorcerer to banish. Those are the really the only cards that can out stuff like this, which is really, really nice. And then we're playing the one poly, of course, because you can search it, but it's also really good because it puts stuff in your graveyard for a potential BLS. Then we're playing the one return from a different dimension, and this card is a card that I want to bump up to two, like I was saying earlier. This card, for sure, because Fusion Gate is just so, I guess you could say resource heavy because you're using so many cards and they're banishing them specifically, right? So for that reason, I think I want to play a second one of these and I would cut probably the Avion and then play a third Judgment, cut the Burst Cinetrix. Just want to let you guys know that. But yeah, we played the one and the one was really good for us. One Dust Tornado, one Torrential, one Ring of Destruction, one Mirror Force, and two Judgment. Judgment was MVP. This card is insane because the biggest problem this deck has, and I'll be honest with you, the biggest issue is that Thousand Eyes Restrict exists in this form at and thousand eyes taking your big monsters because that's really what your deck relies on right making a big monster and then just being able to either protect it or just get rid of all your opponent's back row so that these big monsters just stick on the board and you just do big amounts of damage every turn right so for that reason thousand eyes is one of the biggest problems because if your opponent makes thousand eyes takes one of your big monsters you're kind of in a sticky situation you can judgment thousand eyes which is insanely powerful well not thousand eyes itself but you can judgment metamorphosis which is really really powerful right and if you do that every single time then your opponent doesn't have access to Thousand Eyes and they have a very difficult time outing these monsters. So that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. I really, really like this main deck. I don't think I change anything up other than the Avion and the Burst Cinetrix, like I said, but the rest of it was insanely powerful for me. Now, I completely forgot that I'm not showing you guys a side deck. We did play with a side deck. However, I'll be honest with you. I'm just going to tell you guys right now. The side deck consisted of Book of Moons, uh, Giant True Nades, because you really want to get rid of back row, right? So Giant True Nades was really important. Book of Moons, like I said, Creature Swap was in there. I think an Asura Priest was in there as well because the sword piece is really good into those control decks so that was kind of what was in the side deck just giving you guys an idea I'm not sure why i don't have it here i probably should have done that for you guys my bad my apologies however for the extra deck here we are just playing really like things that you can make and that's three thunder giant three flame wingman you're never ever going to make three flame wingman you're never going to make three thunder giant it just there's no other actual fusion cards you can make in this format i actually looked it up and there was nothing else you could make right so thunder giant flame wingman twin headed thunder dragon 
sandwich. Sandwich is funny because you can actually poly away your Sangan, and sometimes you can get the Sangan effect, which is kind of funny. So that's kind of cool. So sand sandwich is here. It's also 2100, which is not bad either. And then of course the last warrior from another planet. This card is absolutely nuts. So that's it for the deck. It's a 40 card main deck, 15 card extra deck, side deck again. I'm sorry, I forgot to show you guys that, but just remember Ashura Priest, Book of Moons, Back Row Hate. I think I played like a second Dust Tornado and three giant true nade. I think that's what I played. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys try this out for yourselves because I think this deck is insane and I think it's a really cool way to play hero in an old time wizard format. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was my first place elemental hero goat deck profile. Now I explained some changes that I would make to the deck. Nothing super major. However, I do want to say that those were the changes that I would make because if you guys want to try it out for yourselves, if you guys have a goat format locals or you guys just want to play with your friends, then I think I want to be showing you guys the best and most optimal way to play the deck. So I hope you guys did enjoy and if you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I wouldn't be here without the Spanko squad. I actually met a lot of people at the YCS off topic, but I met a lot of people at the most recent and YCS and it just made me realize how much I love doing this and just how much I love that you guys support me through all of this without you guys I would be nothing that's that's why honestly I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart thank you guys all for watching and with that Spanko signing out peace